Hi there everybody, it's Verity here from inkbutterfly.wordpress.com Thank you for joining me to in, again today And we're making this today Okay, or a variation of it I'm going to change the colours to do it in a different colour way uh, This features the uh, Positive Thoughts stamp set Really love this I love the sayings and these, these beautiful images As you can see we're using the butterflies for this particular card and there is the, uh, is it Nature's Thoughts? Yes, Nature's Thoughts uh, dies that we're going to going to use in coordination with that. Okay, so all of these will be available. Um, I'll link them down below straight to my online shop. Please do stop by if you fancy purchasing any of those. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Uh, this combo was um, early espresso for the outline, which I'm going to keep. And I used pool party for the, the rest of it. I'm going to switch that in for um, Rococo Rose, which is one of our in colours. Okay, but I'm going to keep the early espresso for the line art uh, and the sentiments. Okay, okay, so I think first things first, we want to get things uh, stamped and stuff. I have gone ahead and die cut this ahead of time, just so that that is done. Um, and then we're going to use the Whisper White card base. This is cut from thick Whisper White. I cut my card bases um, from A4 cardstock uh, at four, four and one eighth of an inch uh, lengthways, and then score them at five and seven eighths of an inch. Give that a good, good, good um, burnish, and that will stand up beautifully. So those are our layers. And we just need some scrap card stock to, um, oh, just some off cut to do our stamping. I've already lined up the uh, the sentiment onto a block. I'm going to cut this down actually, so you can see the, um, so you can see the process. Otherwise, I'll be stamping too low down. <laughs> Um, because I have leveled this off and I use um, some scrap grid, grid paper print it down and just make sure that it's lined up so I line up the stamp with the edge of the block and that means that when I stamp again if I line up the edge of the block with the edge of the paper it's going to be straight okay so this is early espresso uh, just light tapping on the ink pad this is an H block, one of my favourites for sentiments. Really, really nice size. H and D are the ones I use the most, I think. So, as I said, I'm looking at this edge of my block and making sure it's lined up with the cardstock on the on the bench, and then pressing that down. Just some firm and even pressure to lift that up, and that's stamped beautifully. Now, early espresso seems to take a little while to dry compared to um, other inks. Because I often go and uh, go ahead and cut that, and then I find I've smudged it. Okay. In the meantime, we will stamp our butterflies again. This is early espresso. Just light tapping to get those. Fantastic um, images, aren't they just beautiful? They look, they look good just like that, don't they, really? So my uh, stamp chamois off to the left. Get that cleaned off. Same with that. And that's ready to go for another card. Actually, while that's drying, I'm going to do a bit of the inking on this, okay? I just want those to be completely dry before we do the next step, that's all. Um, we're going to take some scrap paper. I'm going to find some that isn't too distracting. There they are. It is literally just to protect my surface. And we're going to take this um, background panel. Early espresso uh, ink. Uh, it's strong colour, like I say, so I'm just taking off most of that. Uh, off the uh, brush there. I'm just going to go down both sides of that. 
you really don't need much of it just just a little teeny teeny bit circular motions just like that and then I'm just adding a pull a little bit more into the center where that sentiment's going to sit a little bit heavier so just circular motions the more you go the heavier the color will be but not too heavy okay and then we'll bring in our rococo rose and we're going to do something similar so again just take most of that off just i just want a hint of that color coming in oh that's gone too heavy let's blend that out as much as we can You may not see it after the um, once everything's glued together, so let's just make sure that's well off. Um, so I'm just bringing in, basically what I'm doing is trying to bring in the colour of the butterflies into the background a little bit. And it's almost like a crisscross, the early espresso has gone across the middle and I've taken the pink sort of diagonally across if you like. So it just sort of ties the colours together and that's all we need to do on that. Alright, so that's ready to go. Our stamped butterflies also need some colour, and I also did that with the brush. So again, we're going to take off a lot of that colour and just circle from the middle outwards. So we get a uh, darker colour in the middle, but softer colour on the outside. So that one's come out a little darker, so I'm not going to re-ink this brush. I'm just going to go in with what I've got. Like so and that will give us enough of an impression of the colour once they are dry cut. Okay. So we'll trim out the sentiment first. So we're going to use the trimmer. Uh, so this isn't I'm not measuring this at all. All I'm doing is lining it up with the um the runner where the blade uh sits. Okay, so I can just see the tails of those letters there. Uh just peeking on the other side of that and do the same with the top of the F on the other side and we'll do likewise with the end of the sentiment there we'll just cut cut it down as close as we can by lining it up with those little windows okay and that's ready to go to don't need the trimmer anymore and now we're going to die cut our butterflies so there is three of them to do but it won't go take long i'm going to bring in the magnetic cutting plate because this will be a piece of pie to line that up just like that. Okay. Take our top cutting plate, which is here, and just run that through the machine. Just off to my right here. See what you see me winding that through. But it's such a it's a much smoother machine, and I would say actually even with the magnetic platform, it makes it even smoother. If that's at all possible. And it does not, um, I mean, it's really uh, cut into that. You know, the pressure's just fabulous, but this is good. It's a self-healing surface, so it's going to be, going to last for ages. And uh, like I say, once you've got it in position, why did you not daft and uh, move your cardstock like I did the other day? Ain't going nowhere. Number two, number three, easy peasy, right? Just don't want to keep cutting in the same place, that's all, I'm just moving it around. Just like you would with any healing mat, really, if you keep going over the same place. It's not 
good idea. There we go. This one. I always roll it forwards and backwards, it's just easier. It means I don't have to stretch across the back of the machine to reach the plate really. It's not actually necessary to run it through twice at all. There we go. Pink butterfly, so my die is nice and safe. I can just leave that to one side and it isn't going to go anywhere. And we've got our gorgeous little butterflies and our little die cut thingies. So we'll just, um, I'm just going to um, shape this in my uh, hand. Look, see, curls right up and then if you bend it back a bit you get these nice curled up wings. Any like a pen or anything will do if you want to use something like that. And all that's left to do now is to assemble our card. So we will use our stamp and seal to just put this flat on the card base. I'm just going to lift that up so that I can see if it is lined up. Yep. Well, it looks okay to me anyway. <laughs> I'm going to use dimensionals for the rest of this now. So I've got some little sort of scraps of uh, dimensional from sort of edge pieces and stuff. So those are perfect for those kind of sentiments. Don't waste it, don't throw it away, it's all good stuff. So use it up. So this guy's going to go somewhere in the middle here. Use the uh, detail in that edge of the die to make sure it's nice and straight. Nice and easy. And we're going to use the mini dimensionals for the um, for the butterflies. Now, I have a tip for these because they are a little bit harder to take off the release paper. If you use a pokey tool like that, they just sort of... And then just slide them off and then you can just take off the release paper at the same time just like that just like that there we go and they're ready to go static on them just getting them in the bin and then these guys just fluttering away what should we cover that, that blobby bit actually I like that I think I'll have a lighter one over there let's have that lighter one over there and then that won't look odd at all and then this guy go in here like that didn't do this on the original sample. Whoops. I'm going to add a little bit of Wink of Stella to those wings too. Just a hint. Fabulous stuff, Wink of Stella. Love it. As soon as I open one pen, I order another one. I'm not going to be uh, without one. I'll link it below and you can put that straight in your basket too if anything else you would like okay so so uh, Wink of Scotella is just just a phenomenal product just to add a bit of sparkle to um to those little butterflies there you are just twinkling away um without being over the top I'm not going to add any rhinestones or anything else I'm just going to leave it quite clean and simple for today so I hope you like those little ideas for you. And of course, phew, any old colours uh, you like there. If you wanted to go a little bit more vintage, if you swapped out the Whisper White for Vera Vanilla, that would look amazing too. Another idea for you there. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, do stay safe out there and we will catch you again soon. Okay, take care. Bye.